NBC5 News at 11 starts now. It was a bloody day. Mm -hmm. Why proposed budget cuts could have a devastating effect on Jackson County. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Joseph. And I'm Laura Cavanaugh. Currently. Under financial pressure, a recent state audit reveals that Jackson County has been devouring its reserves to the tune of $6 million a year. And today, the Jackson County Budget Committee made some tough decisions and deep cuts to avoid going over their own fiscal cliff. We all get it. We understand that, you know, revenues are down. Cuts need to be made. As a judge, if these programs are not funded at an adequate level, the effects will be far-reaching. An impassioned plea from Circuit Court Judge Lisa Greif on behalf of local nonprofits who receive grants from the county's Department of Health and Human Services. That's what they do. They are public safety entities because they are there responsible for the protection of the general public from significant danger, harm, or damage through the work they do. A packed gallery full of supporters speaking out at the Jackson County Budget Committee meeting Thursday for the $360,000 in funding at stake a lifeline to organizations like CASA. Last year, the funds, as you know, were cut by 15%. And this year, as you know, too, you were directed me to reduce those by another 15%. But the Department of Health and Human Services, along with many others, felt sharp cuts Thursday. It was a bloody day. Commissioner Don Skundrick feeling a bit battered from a grueling day filled with heated debate. If the county pulls out completely, that might be the, enough of a statement to the university saying, we don't need to fund it because they no longer want us. But everybody else is, is uh, getting knifed. I understand, but I mean, they're getting knifed. They're not getting executed. And deep budget cuts to the tune of $1.4 million. I move we, uh, we, we eliminate that funding to the 4-H and FFA. Among the proposed cuts, $350,000 from Health and Human Services, $150,000 from Veteran Services. Also on the chopping block, 250000 from local libraries and funding to the OSU extension experiment, as well as 250000 from the sheriff's office. The departments have already made several cuts, uh, and they've worked really hard to try to get within those budget targets. But that only put us at $6.8 million as a deficit, and we've only got $13 million in reserve. If spending continues at the current rate, the state auditor estimates those reserves would be depleted by 2015. The committee took what they felt was necessary action and adopted those proposed budget cuts with a contingency plan. None of these cuts may actually happen depending on if we're able to facilitate this other option. That option is a proposed budget enhancement ordinance. It applies an annual surcharge to all homes and apartments in Jackson County, ranging anywhere from $2 to $10. It's a jail surcharge. The, the funding from that will go to the jail then the general fund dollars that we now provide to the jail will come back. A possible short-term fix that could be enacted as a county ordinance, one that might help stop the bleeding and heal the wounds from slashed departments. A successful date, would you say? <laughs> I guess if you call a, a clean execution a successful day, uh, it really drives home the point of what county government is trying to do in, in being responsible to its taxpayers. We have to submit a, a balanced budget where we have X amount of reserve dollars left. This seemed to be the toughest way, but right now the only way that we saw fit. Well, the budget will not be finalized until the commissioners approve it sometime in May or June.